Hello everyone. Today I am going to talk to you about progressive web apps. Um, so just a quick overview. I feel like the, the what and the why are kind of related, so I'm going over those at the same time. Um, so why would you want to use a progressive web app? It's a web application um, that you're already familiar with building, but it gives you some native app functionality. Um, so for example, you can send users push notifications. Um, it does some background processing, which I'll get into more in a little bit. Um, because of that background processing, it has instant loading regardless of network status. Um, your users will never see the no network connection dinosaur. Um, they'll always get some kind of content. And on the user's end, it, it seems like it's installable. Um, it effectively gives you a bookmark on the home screen, but what that bookmark gives you looks very much like a native application. Um, so we'll look at that in just a minute. Um, so this is just an example. This will continue to loop, but you can see um, this user goes to a website. They are prompted to install the application. If they select that, a logo shows up on the home screen. Um, and it looks just like any other app uh, uh, icon on the home screen. So how do you build a progressive web app? How do you make your web app progressive? Um, so it's the web apps that you know and love, HTML, uh, CSS, JavaScript, everything that you're familiar with, with a few extra parts. Um, and those are the service worker, the app shell, and the manifest. Um, so the app shell is kind of a skeleton of the layout of your site. Um, it's static content, basically stuff that's not going to change very frequently. So like your title, your navigation, anything like that, you'll have cached locally so that when the user goes to your site, that can load instantly while the dynamic data is being loaded from the network. Um, and a useful thing about that is just that the user can see that something's actually happening instead of maybe going to a website and just getting like a blank white screen and it's not completely clear whether something is loading or if they're in the right place. <coughs> so the next piece of the puzzle is the service worker. And the service worker is just a JavaScript script um, that the browser runs separately from the web app. And the service worker kind of acts as a network proxy. Um, so when you are connected to the network, the service worker will fetch data and cache it. And then if you lose network connection, the service worker will serve up the cache data to the web application. Um, and you can do a lot of configuration with this. This is where you would set up like any push notifications that you want to send and kind of set up the rules for your caching. Um, and it can go both ways. You can cache stuff from the server. You can also, if a user tries to give some kind of input and they don't have a network connection, the service worker can hold on to that and then send it back to the server once they are connected again. Um, and the last piece of this is the manifest, which is just a JSON file that lets you define sort of what you want your app to look like. Um, if you look at the code example here, you can set an app name, you set the app icon that you want. This is what they'll see on the home screen if they install it. Um, the start URL, so in this example, you're basically creating an icon with a name that when it's clicked on, it goes to the index dot HTML. Um, you can also set up theme colors and a splash screen like what you normally see when you open a, a native app. Um, so this is just a quick example um, of a demo app that I installed on my phone. You can see on the left, um, that's just the icon. Uh, when I click on it, I get that middle image. I get the splash screen while everything is loading. And then once it's all loaded, it really just looks like a native app. 
I don't see like a URL bar or anything like that, but this is literally just going to a web page that has been configured to look like this. Um, so a demo of this, just to show you what it looks like. This is an example app that Google made available um, as part of a tutorial. Uh, so you can actually walk through and build this yourself if you're interested. Um, so this is what it would look like on a phone. It also just is like a normal website on a computer. Um, I've had this, let's see, I think I have this offline. Yeah, so I've had this offline since lunchtime. Um, and so this is all data from lunchtime. Um, if I refresh, you can see that my request fails because I don't have network, but the data is still loading. Um, if I go to like google.com, I get that no internet connection dinosaur. Um, but then if I reconnect, I don't know that I'll have any new data here to see, but <laughs> if I reconnect and refresh, it loads fresh data and caches that new data. Um, so in this case, the information might be a little bit out of date, but it's still more useful than the page that just says that I have no internet. Oh, and I also wanted to show, you can see in these screenshots that it takes um, kind of how the progressive loading works. First you get the, um, so this is, these screenshots were taken like by the developer tools just now when I refreshed. Um, so first it gets the, the like main uh, bar at the top in the background, then it loads a card, um, let's see. That's interesting. In most of the examples I've done, the first card that I get, it will have all of the text, but it won't have the images. I guess this just loaded more quickly than some of the other like, tests I've done on it. Um, so it could load just the text and then the images, or just the first card. Um, and then if you keep going, like then it loads the cards further down. Um, and it's pretty fast. So you're never really waiting around to see something appear. Um, yeah, and then if you're interested in this at all, um, really I could have put like 50 different Google developers links here, but <laughs> uh, Google is really into pushing progressive web apps. Um, I think because they're really big into the idea of like the next billion, um, if you've heard talk of that at all, the idea is that like the next billion people that come online, probably their only internet connection is gonna be on a mobile phone that's maybe not the best phone and maybe not the best internet connection. So these are ways that you can make the web better for those users. Um, I saw one thing that indicated that Apple is interested in supporting this, but it's not something they've done yet. Um, but on any, any device or any uh, browser that doesn't support it, it'll just act like a normal website. Um, and then the code labs are good too. That's where this tutorial came from. They have different tutorials on all sorts of things. There's one on making your existing web application into a progressive web app. Uh, so if you have a burning desire to make your Grease Shopper project <laughs> progressive, you could do that. Um, but yeah, that is progressive web apps.